A very good morning, a good evening to everyone. On behalf of IAP Digital Team, I welcome to all participants. Before hand over this webinar to today's moderator, Dr. Richa, uh, I would uh, like to uh, call uh, all participants. Please subscribe our IAP YouTube channel for watching more and more webinar. Now I hand over this webinar to Dr. Richa. She is a joint coordinator of IAP Women Cell Chhattisgarh State. Hand over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alopi, ma'am. And very good evening, everyone. Aap sabka is bedrin shaam mein bhot bhot swagat hai. I would like to call upon Dr. Pritha Agrawal from Chhattisgarh. Uh, Ambikapur district to welcome our chief speaker, Dr. Dhara Shah from Ahmedabad. Please, Pritha ma'am, continue the session. Thank you, Dr. Richa. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Richa. Um, hello and a good, good evening to all dear professionals and my dear colleagues. This is Dr. Preeta Agrawal, senior physiotherapist and district coordinator, Sarguja District, Chhattisgarh, representing IAPWC Chhattisgarh State. It is a matter of profound pride for me to speak about an esteemed professional, Dr. Dhara Shah from WOW IIP. She is a true expert, a great clinician, a profound teacher, and a highly acclaimed guide for all the pelvic floor issues and she is truly worshipped medical professional for all her patients. And above all, a very dear and a highly valued medical professional. So I humbly welcome Dr. Dhara Shah for today's webinar. I'm happy to call Dr. Dhara with her mentor, Dr. Hey Desai, sir, for today's webinar. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Very good evening. You are heartily, you are heartily welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for and lovely. Yeah, and That's forum is your all, all yours. Thank you very much. Thank so, you, ma'am. Uh, before we go ahead, a very good uh, evening to all the panelists as well as the attendees. I would really like to thank Dr. Uh, Sanjeev Jha, Sir, Dr. Ruchi Varshne, ma'am, Dr. Shakina Kanchwala. Dr. Pritha, Dr. Richa, and not to uh, forget to mention Dr. Garima Tiwari, with whom I was coordinating. And we successfully made this uh, webinar through IAP Chhattisgarh uh, Women's Cell Team. Uh, thank you very much for joining us into this webinar and to break the silent suffering and help millions of people who are suffering silently. And I would I would also like to uh, thank Dr. Hey Desai, sir, for giving me an opportunity to be a part of his visionary team. and. Uh, to uh, show me the path uh, so that I can be of some help to the people who are suffering silently. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to start with my presentation for today, the topic which we have selected, uh, that is on pelvic organ prolapse. And uh, before we go uh, towards our topic, I would really like to introduce all of you to Dr. Hedde Sai, sir. Uh, sir would not require any introduction anymore, but it is always a proud moment for me to introduce him uh, as he's a very great leader as well as a mentor of mine. He is entrepreneur, innovator, and author of Amazon's bestseller number one in neurology, Amazon's bestseller in gynecology and obstetrics, and Amazon's bestseller in physical therapy. For the contribution which he has made into the field of pelvic floor rehab, he is popularly known as father of modern pelvic floor rehabilitation, and it is his vision that is to courageously break the cultural taboo and to make the intimate health accessible to every single man, every single woman through innovative glow or uh, through innovative technologies, books and services. So Sir is the chairman and founder of WOW IP, that is International Institute of Pelvic Floor Research Rehab and Education, which is a government recognized institute for pelvic floor rehab. 
uh, wow experience research and development which also has received certificate of recognition from government of india wow group of businesses world pelvic floor organization and easy pfm exerciser and vidyog uh, private limited which also has received certificate of recognition from government of india so it is really a tr it's truly a uh, blessing for me to be uh, under his guidance under his vision uh, and to uh, and to uh, and uh, and spreading the, this awareness through millions of people uh, to the intellectual and innovative property it is uh, wow pa 360 wow vspa wow men wow vagina fit wow vagina dilate wow group mobile application and to the academic contribution it is hates mmd hates its FMT hits as uh, surf assessment scale, its providers protection guidelines, its female sexual function scale, and its male sexual function scale. So let us go ahead towards the uh, topic for our today's webinar that is pelvic organ prolapse and pelvic floor rehab. So before we understand pelvic organ prolapse, I would really like to uh, take a few moments explaining this slide to you, which is showing us the life cycle of a female or a life cycle of a woman. So you, as you can see here, being a female, uh, right from the childhood till the time you reach the puberty, you enter your adolescent phase, you enter your premarital phase, you get married, you conceive, you deliver, you enter your menopause, and so on. And then you enter your postmenopausal age. So at each and every stage of life, a female has multiple changes into her body, which are not just limited to hormonal, but psychological, physiological, anatomical as well. A 9 to 11 years old girl, when she hits her puberty, she might not be knowing at that time that within, in the upcoming one and a half to two years, she's going to start her menstrual cycle, she's going to hit her menarche. As soon as she hits her menarche, slowly the process of development of the secondary sexual characters, the primary sexual characters starts in her case. And then she reaches to a phase of adolescence. At the phase of adolescence, again, her sexual, uh, uh, sexual attractiveness or sexual curiosities increases. And then she eventually enters into the phase of uh, into a marital age. And that, that leads to the beginning of her sexual life as well. So right from the puberty till this phase also, if you can see the, span, the period span of say uh, 10 to 15 years or 20 years, if you uh, like for the female, the girl, ladies or the girls who are reaching uh, puberty by 10 years of age, maybe 10 to 15 years of this life, there would be a lot of physical changes happening into her, a lot of hormonal imbalances which will occur into her. And then when she enters into this beautiful phase of, uh, you can say the adulthood or where actually her sexual activities begin. So at this point, like after uh, maybe some couple of years, she gets pregnant. Then uh, during pregnancy also, there is a lot of changes which we all know, again, leading to hormonal changes, deliveries, uh, sorry, labor, the childbirth, delivery, maybe second pregnancy, and then maybe she might enter in, into uh, maybe uh, more, five, ten more years, she might enter into the phase of perimenopausal and then postmenopausal. So at all these phases of life, the pelvic floor is equally involved, it is equally uh, affected, and there are high chances that the pelvic floor dysfunction can set in at any age. So it's not so that pelvic floor dysfunction occurs only into sexually active females or only into postmenopausal females and not into uh, puberty or adolescent girls. So at each and every aspect of life, it is very important for us being a medic medical uh, personnel or not being a medical, also being an educated personnel to spread the awareness of the requirement of basic pelvic floor uh, assessment, at least the self-assessment. So and because prevention is always better than cure. If you have a good foundation, a strong foundation, your building is definitely going to be strong enough. Okay. So with this, uh, let us discuss quickly about what pelvic floor muscles are. As you can see, it, this image which I have kept it, is with two perspectives. One is it, it is beautifully describing the different pelvic floor muscles. And secondly, it is giving us a clear idea on differentiation of how a male pelvic floor is and how the female structure is. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but I hope my slides are visible to all. If not, please let me know. 
Yes, Dr. Dhara, your slide is visible. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now when we talk about the pelvic floor muscles, uh, as I always say, my fa favorite model to be into all the webinars. Uh, yes, a quick, brief intro. As you can see, the symphysis pubis anteriorly, if I just rotate it, and inferiorly, you can see the ischial tuberosities on either side. Just posterior, you can see the coccyx. And if I'm giving you an inferior view, the red colored muscle or the red colored structure which you are seeing here is the pelvic floor. These are the pelvic floor muscles. And these muscles, they are divided into three layers, superficial layer, middle layer, and the deep layer, okay? The muscles, they are same into male and female. The major difference being a vaginal opening for a female, which is not there into a male. So can you see here, if I am just taking the laser pointer, all the muscles in the description are highlighted with the, with the different colors. Uh, and you can see that in the male, even if, even if you look at the bony pelvis, we have learned that uh, the bony pelvis is android type and the gynecoid type means a narrower pelvis and a broader pelvis. So females naturally have a broader pelvis because they are going to go for childbearing. Okay, male they have comparatively narrow pelvis, and in that as well, the structure you can see here is compact, and there is no opening other than the anal opening. Whereas in a female we have the vaginal opening. It is not just the presence of the opening, but the beauty is it is elastic in nature. The vaginal opening into an, uh, an, an, an inactive or sexually an inactive female would be as small, uh, would be very small. And vaginal opening into a girl who is sexually active would be different. And the opening for a mother who has delivered through vaginal delivery will be completely different. So that the vaginal opening, it's not just the presence, but the elasticity and the trauma which has, has gone through the childbirth and labor, which makes female more vulnerable to pelvic organ prolapses. Males, they do have rectal prolapse, but that is completely a different scenario. Rectal mucosal prolapse, but the major pelvic organ prolapse when we talk about, so what are the pelvic structure, pelvic organs which can go for prolapse? So they, they are the... If I have to show you in uh, in this model, so they can it can be the bladder as you can see, the urethra, maybe the uterus, the rectum. Okay, so any of these structures or the maybe the vault of the vagina, so any of these structures can go into prolapse. Okay, the bladder, the urethra, the uterus, the vault of the vagina or the rectum or the Intestinal contents, that is the intestinal contents, loops of the intestines can also go into prolapse. Okay, so uh, if we quickly look at the muscles of the pelvic floor, the layers, so uh, not going in detail, but just giving you an idea. Let me in my slide, but if someone, uh, if the host can uh, go for a if you can pin my slide for everyone's a spotlight view, if you can give give to other candidates, that would be really great. Um, right. So if uh, if like you can see the pelvic floor structure here and symphysis, pubis, coccyx, ischial tuberosities on either side. This is the perineal body. You can see this is this is the perineal body. And from perineal body to ischial tuberosity, we have the ish, uh, we have the superficial transverse perineal muscle. The superficial transverse perineal muscle from here to here. Then, if you can see from the uh, ischial tuberosity up towards the clitoris, this oblique muscle, which is running throughout the ischiopubic ramus, this is the ischio cavernosus. Okay. Then you can see a U-shaped muscle which is covering the urethra and or you can say not covering but you can say which is running uh, on both the sides of vagina and the urethral opening and merging up towards the clitoris. So this is the bulbocavernosus and this is the external anal sphincter and then comes the inner body. 
okay so that these are the superficial layers the superficial layers its major role is to go for fast twitch contractions to work for the sphincteric control to work for the sexual excitement and sexual rules if i am just removing this and if you if you see this so these are these are the deep transverse perineal muscles the deep transverse perineal muscles they again have different fibers like urogenital diaphragm or uh, compressor urethra urethro or vaginal sphincters okay so there are multiple other fibers which of, of the deep transverse perineal muscle again the role of this muscle is to majorly provide the continence the urinary continence okay and then comes the muscle which uh, which plays a major role in pelvic organ support that is the deep deepest layer of pelvic floor muscles as you can see here the deepest layer of pelvic floor muscles i'm just uh, opening it so it, it is it becomes more easily visible okay, so this is the deepest layer of pelvic floor muscle and you can see how beautifully these fibers are arranged from anterior aspect to posterior aspect from lateral to medial Okay, they are, are like they have just woven and have made a, a a big hammock or you can say a ball for supporting the organs. They are supporting the fibers are running in all the directions. So if you are talking about this muscle fiber, which is the pelvic floor anatomy, would be described differently in different books. There are multiple school of thoughts describing different layers of pelvic floor, but the one which I am discussing today is the easiest one to remember. but you can go back and refer to any school of thought which you feel comfortable okay so the first if you see from a sum symphysis pubis to coccyx so this is the pubo rectalis muscle okay the pubo rectalis the next to it if you can see this is the obturator internus and from the fascia of the obturator internus you can see the iliococcygeus muscle coming and then is the coccygeus muscle so together these three muscles they are the levator ani again some books say that coccygeus is not a part of levator ani that's completely up to you what you want to follow okay but easy way to remember is pubo coccygeus ilio coccygeus and coccygeus fine but we have three openings so the pubo coccygeus medial part has to uh, the medial fibers or the uh, medial muscle of the pubo coccygeus has to open up and give way to these three canals and so we have the pubo urethralis pubo vaginalis pubo rectalis in certain books it is pubo ure, uh, uh, pubo urethralis or visceralis pubo vaginalis pubo analis pubo rectalis and pubo perinealis okay but that's so these muscles together the the uh, medial portion of these muscles the pubo coccygeus and other fibers they are responsible for supporting the canals and providing the continence and the lateral fibers together they work for the support and stability support of the pelvic organs and stability of the whole spine stability of your body okay so these are the pelvic floor muscles now when we go ahead and look at the functions of pelvic floor muscles so as we can understand the major function of pelvic floor muscle is to provide the support to the pelvic organs so if i'm just keeping a pelvic organ uh, like this you can see here this is the structure the pelvic muscles and this is how the pelvic floor or the pelvic organs lie in the cavity okay so this is how it they, it supports the pelvic organ the second function is providing the bowel and the bladder control the third function is it's not it just does not provide the control the continence but also is responsible for defecation and micturition in order to have pain free comfortable and uh, pleasurable sexual function then sexual functioning for breathing coordination between diaphragm and pelvic floor is really very important in order to have a stable spine and to have a no, and to have a uh, iap that is intra abdominal pressure properly okay and pregnancy and childbirth supporting the pregnancy supporting the pregnant uterus and then allowing an easy and comfortable childbirth 
So these are the functions of the pelvic floor muscles. And what can go wrong in these muscles? Okay. So the pelvic floor muscles can go into dysfunction in the form of, uh, see, normally when we talk about a normal, how should be a normal pelvic floor? Okay. How will you, what is a normal pelvic floor strength or what is a normal pelvic floor muscle? So the muscle should have a capacity to contract with its strongest stability and to hold that contraction as long as you want. It's not just the contract, like it's contracted and it's leaving it. So contract and hold it as long as you want and relax completely. So that to contract and support the organs, maintain the continence, um, protect your inter, uh, pro uh, maintain a stability and relax so that you can urinate, defecate, go for sexual activity and childbirth uh, easily. Okay, so the cap the muscles should be strong enough to contract as much as they want and as strong as they want, and they should have a capacity to relax as much as they want and uh, and for the activities to support. Okay, but. If there is any problem into this stability and mobility concept, so if they are unable to provide a stability, if they are so weak, they are so loose, they are so lax that they cannot support the organs or they cannot maintain the continence, then it is a droopy or you can say a weak pelvic floor. If these muscles go into spasm, they go into pain, they go into tightness, the muscles are so, so hardly contracted or the muscles are so strongly uh, tightened up that they are not relaxing and allowing its normal opening ability, then those are the taut pelvic floor. So we term them as a hypotonus pelvic floor and a hypertonus pelvic floor muscles. So then next comes like one of the consequences of a weak pelvic floor or hypotonus pelvic floor can even be pelvic organ prolapse. It is termed, uh, it, the, short, uh, the short form can be POP, pelvic organ prolapse. So in this image, you can see what do we basically mean by pelvic organ prolapse? That is descent or shifting of the pelvic organs from their position. I would really uh, request the participant to mute themselves. Okay. So uh, the pelvic organ prolapse means the, the descent or you can say the shifting of, of the pelvic organ from their normal position. So if the uterus falls back or the rectum falls front or the you. Uh, Sorry, if the uterus falls down, if the rectum falls front, and if the bladder falls back. So that means the, it is not into its anatomical position. It has descended down or shifted down from its position. So that is pelvic organ prolapse. Okay. Now, when we talk, when we talk about the types of pelvic organ prolapse, see, as I said, all these organs they have, and why, why does the pelvic organ prolapse happens. What are the causes of POP? So the causes of POP, we will be discussing the causes also into our upcoming slides. Uh, but when we talk about the POP, so it can be, see all the components, this, this, and this. So you can say the anterior, you consider vagina as the center. Okay, so anterior component, the posterior component, and the superior component. Okay, all these have a capacity to prolapse. So now if it is, so if, if there is a prolapse from the, of the anterior wall of vagina, okay. So what, what structures are there anterior to vagina? So the structures anterior to vagina are the urinary bladder and the urethra. So if there is prolapse of the bladder or the urethra, that is the anterior wall prolapse. Okay. If there is a prolapse of the rectum, okay, where is the rectum located? Posterior to vagina. So then this is the posterior wall prolapse. Okay. Posterior wall prolapse. Fine. If there is prolapse of the uterus or small intestine in cases of hysterectomy, then it is a central prolapse okay so you can say it in other words as anterior compartment prolapse posterior compartment prolapse and central prolapse okay clear fine 
Now, so the term which is used to describe this prolapse is seal, C E L E. So if someone says it is cystocele, cysto means bladder. So cystocele is prolapse of bladder. Urethrocele means prolapse of urethra. Urethrocystocele means prolapse of urethra and the bladder. Rectocele, rectocele is prolapse of the rectum. Then comes the word enterocele. Enterocele means prolapse of the intestinal contents. It is commonly seen post hysterectomy. Okay, that is enterocele. And then comes the uterine prolapse. Uterine prolapse means the uterus as a whole is coming down. And the last term can be the vaginal vault prolapse. V A U L T, vault. Vaginal vault prolapse. Now, when we talk about the vaginal, all these types of prolapses, so it can be cystocele, urethrocele, urethrocystocele, rectocele, or intestinal prolapse, or the uterine prolapse, or the vaginal vault. This wall of the vagina. It comes out, it prolapses out. That is the vaginal vault prolapse. Okay. Now I said that enterocele is quite common post hysterectomy. What is the reason? The reason being uterus, you can you can see here that all these organs, okay, the, the bladder, the uterus, the rectum, they are in close congruity to each other. Okay, so if this is the, you can say, if suppose uh, this is the bladder, so this is how the vagina and the uterus is, and then you posteriorly you have the rectum like this. Okay, now when the, whenever there is prolapse, so pro, uh, the, the, the uh, impairment, you can see the anatomical impairment is laxity of the ligaments and weakness of the pelvic floor muscles. So laxity of the ligaments supporting these organs and weakness of the pelvic floor muscles, the two main reasons for prolapse in presence of gravitational pull. Okay. Now, suppose if you are removing, so if there is a uterine prolapse and you are going for a hysterectomy. Okay. So post hysterectomy, if other, other, what will happen is this space which the uterus was occupying, though the uterus is this small, smaller than maybe your fist, but still it was an organ which was supposed to be here, okay, because of any reason you are removing it and your ligamental supports are not strong, your pelvic floor is not strong, it will result into, oh sorry, it can result into, de into descent or prolapse of your intestinal contents. What is above uterus is your intestinal and abdominal contents. So they might go for prolapse. Okay. So that's why enterocele is quite common post hysterectomy. If uh, the, there is associated pelvic floor weakness, ligamental laxities, and other issues. So this is exactly demonstrated here. This is the anterior wall prolapse, cystocele. Posterior wall prolapse, erectocele. Uterine prolapse, you can see the whole uterus is outside, so it can be termed as procedentia, when whole of, uter of your uterus is hanging out of your vagina. Okay, the whole uterus is hanging out of your vagina, that's known as procedentia. It's, it's a very painful, discomforting, disabling condition. And you can see here the intestinal prolapse, okay, along with the and the intestines are also prolapsing as well as the uh, vault is also getting prolapsed. Okay. So see that the vault, the, this vault is also coming out along with the intestinal contents. So that is the vault prolapse with enterocele. Now comes the causes of the pelvic organs. What are the causes of POP? So if wherever you keep this, uh, you know, word key causes of POP, the first and the foremost cause comes out to be pregnancy, delivery, and pregnancy, labor, and childbirth. The strain, see, see uh, the position which is used for the pregnancy, the literomy position, or uh, maybe the, the lack of the training the female is being, uh, ha gets during the antenatal phase, and the constant pushing or straining of the uh, female on her pelvic floor and ending up into maybe episiotomy or a perineal tear of grade one, two, and three. This leads to that is one thing which happens. Okay. But then what after that? The next phase should be 
taking care of the area through which you have delivered okay heads are always say that suppose a uh, if you are seeing a patient with maybe a shoulder injury you are doing a shoulder rehab for a patient so post surgery are you going to go for a rest for the patient for the rest of the life they do not move your muscles let them uh, heal by their own you do not go for any active exercises no rather you would be concerned about the pain you would be concerned about the range you would be concerned about the functionality but that is exactly not the case when we talk about the vaginal childbirths or when we talk about the deliveries maybe cesarean maybe normal whatever the mode of delivery was but after childbirth not enough care is been given to the area which has worked so hard to uh, to maintain to uh, during the pregnancy and then during the delivery all we do is rest and then we are bothered about whether the extra kgs of fat which is accumulated on the body is been shedded out or not okay but the muscles which has actually worked so hard so sir says that you imagine a rubber band is it is his favorite example he says so you imagine a red colored rubber band and you stretch it for 9 minutes and leave it so its elasticity is going to lose so you are stretching a rubber band for 9 months and not just stretching you are straining it the straining your pelvic floor for 9 months and then after delivery you're not bothered about it so that's why childbirth is one of the major cause for vaginal laxities and pelvic organ prolapse okay because the post delivery healing healing happens by mother nature whatever sutures are been taken for you would heal maybe today maybe tomorrow maybe after a month or so if not maybe after two months they are going to heal but what about the strength your muscle has lost okay. age as you grow old we discussed in the first slide itself there are a lot of hormonal physiological psychological anatomical changes happens in the body as you grow old the, the moment you are going to reach your perimenopausal menopausal age there will be a very beautiful hormone estrogen estrogen which will not be as available as it was do you during your reproductive age lack of estrogen hormones also lead to also leads to smooth muscle weakness it also leads to of the calcium calcium uh, reduction in the body or calcium deficiencies in the body okay menopausal changes which happens menopause which comes okay obesity added up maybe diabetes hypertension any other neurological involvement any other musculoskeletal involvement all these things can lead to pelvic organ prolapse okay on the top of that if with a weaker pelvic floor you are going for excessive vigorous heavy exercises in order to shed the extra kg fat which you have gained okay and you are not bothered about the trampoline that what is happening on the trampoline when you are going for zumba when you are going for hitt when you are going for any other exercises and this trampoline is constantly under stress and eventually it can see pelvic organ prolapse is not a condition that today your muscles are weak and tomorrow you go got a grade 4 prolapse it's a chronic condition you might it might set in maybe after your uh, first delivery but you might experience the symptoms maybe after 10 years or 15 years when it is really becoming more and more progressive and severe okay so that's why the first line which uh, i said is prevention or early diagnosis is the cure Okay. Symptoms. How can you? How can a female come to know that she has prolapse or she is suffering through prolapse? Okay. The symptoms of prolapse are wide ranged. Not all prolapse females will have similar symptoms. For some of them, it would be a urinary hesitancy. For some of them, it would be a urinary urgency. For some of them, it would be a urinary leakage or urine leakage. Some can come up with constipation, chronic constipation. some can come up with fecal incontinence for some it can be a lack of desire to have sex for some of it can be a painful sexual intercourse okay it can be pain or pressure on the vagina feeling of looseness or gaping as if you know it is open down there it is very loose down there i do not feel anything down there or sitting on a ball like sensation 
the fee, the patients might come up and complain that whenever I sit, I feel that there is a tennis ball and on that I'm sitting. Okay. Uh, pushing out of uh, menstrual products like tampons, menstrual cups. Okay. Maybe a tissue bulging. Like whenever I, uh, the patient might complain that whenever I sneeze or whenever I cough, I feel that something is popping out. The sensation of popping out. So there can be a varied um, be varied symptoms. Some females can even experience coital incontinence. Coital incontinence means during leakage during sexual activity. It can happen in the females who have an anterior compartmental prolapse. So when I talk about anterior compartmental prolapse, we discussed cystocele or urethrocele. Now, if there is a cystocele, if there is a urethrocele and the female goes for a sexual penetration, okay, the mechanical push of the penis can lead to leakage. Muscles are weak. There is a mechanical push. Muscles cannot hold and there can be leakage. Okay. So there can be a varied symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse. Now grading. See, I'm not going in very much detail thinking about the time constraints, but I really want to give you an idea of what prolapses and what other than, uh, you know, just Kegels can we do in these cases. Okay. So uh, there are three classifications for grading the pe pelvic organ prolapse. Sean, Badenwalker and Pop, P-O-P-Q, that is pelvic organ prolapse quantitative uh, scale or the quantitative scale which has been used, P uh, pop Q. But the most reliable is the pop Q. Okay. So uh, the pop Q, I'm not going to go in detail of pop Q, but the gradings, they say that zero, a stage zero is no prolapse. A stage one is most distal prolapse is one centimeter above the hymen. So the hymen, the hymen remnant or the hymenal ring, it is present at just above the vaginal enteritis. So if the prolapsed organ is a one centimeter above the hymenal ring, that is a grade one prolapse. If it is distal, if it is uh, between one centimeter above to one centimeter below the hymenal ring, it is a grade two prolapse. If it is more than grade uh, two centimeters, but it is less than the total vaginal length, that is a grade three prolapse. And if there is a complete aversion, okay, this slide, this picture, the first one which I had showed, a complete aversion of your pelvic organ. This is a grade four uh, pelvic organ prolapse. This is procedentia, where the whole uterus has been pulled out. So there is a grade four complete aversion of pelvic organs. Okay, or uh, pel uh, grade four pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, they also check it whether the push they are experiencing is. So this, the uh, POP-Q is being done, done by the gynecologist. Uh, we, as a pelvic floor rehab uh, therapist, specialist, we should know about the grading. So if someone is coming to you with a grade, you should know what it is. But it is not a right idea to suggest your patient that what grade prolapse you're suffering through or what compartmental prolapse you're suffering through because that is not our expertise. The way you know what are the medicines for diabetes, but you do not prescribe them. Similarly, you should know what are the grades of prolapse, but you should not document it. Okay, it's outside the scope of pelvic uh, rehab specialist practice. Okay, so uh, compartmental. So if you feel a bulge or a pressure from the anterior compartment, you can consider that it to be an anterior compartmental prolapse, a bulge or a pressure during the PV from the posterior compartment or from the superior compartment or the uh, 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 central compartment gives you an idea that what wall prolapse it is, what organ prolapse it is. When we go on towards our management of POP, so uh, majority management is conservative. Okay. And that is exactly why we should be happy about it because it is conservative. In conservative, there can be two plans. First is passery. Passeries are the supportive devices which are being used intravaginally to support the prolapsing structure, okay, and to improvise the function. Passeries are also effective if you are seeing a case suffering through urinary incontinence, okay. So correcting the kink can also, like with the help of a passery, also relieve some symptoms of UI. So passery is used in both the cases, urinary incontinence as well as pelvic organ prolapses. Uh, depending upon the 
type of prolapse, the grade of prolapse, and your age, your other factors, whether you are sexually active, you are inactive, what is your age and other things. Uh, the pessary has been prescribed to you uh, by the gynecologist or the urogynecologist. And this is our forte pelvic floor rehab. So we will discuss about what pelvic floor rehab can we do in our upcoming slides. Surgical operation, surgical procedures can be obliterative surgeries or the reconstructive surgeries, but that typically happens after a grade three and four. Grade one and two is conservative. So, you know, we really play a role into this. Passeries, as I said, that they are the intravaginal devices which are used to support the uh, prolapsed organ. And it also helps to, uh, for the, helps females with urinary incontinence. It can be basically divided into two types, like what type of passery you want. You want a support passery or a space filling passery. Okay, support passery is like this. This you can see the ring passery or the donut passery. So these are basically the support passeries, which are just supporting the structure and the vagina is open and the female can have a penetration, a sexual activity with the passery in, okay? And other can be the space filling passeries like the cube passeries. There are multiple gel horn hair, multiple types of passeries are there. So it is basically, it fills the space. So it is not possible to have an intercourse with these passeries, the support filling types of passeries. And there are uh, like, even in these two categories, there are more than 10, 10 types of different passeries which are available, incontinence ring passeries, gel horn passeries, uh, Gehrung passeries, uh, this uh, donut shaped passeries, cuboidal passeries, and whatnot. Okay. So, depending upon your symptoms, it has been prescribed by the gynecologist or the urogynecologist. And yes, here comes our role that is pelvic floor rehab. When we talk about pelvic floor rehab, what you can do is see basically uh, we need to understand the impairment. What is the impairment? The impairment is in the form of two things, two major things. One is ligamental weakness and another is pelvic floor weak, muscle weakness, okay? Can we do anything of ligamental weakness? Maybe not majorly. Can we do in the, in something in, when there is a muscle weakness? Yes, we can do a lot when there is muscle weakness. We can go for muscle strengthening exercises. We can use modalities like IFT, intra, interferential current therapies in order to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. Uh, even EMG biofeedbacks are used to go for a good, uh, uh, to go for a proper biofeedback, motor unit creation and strengthening of the pelvic floor muscles. Some of the uh, pelvic rehab specialists, they are even using perineometers in the case of grade one, grade two, completely depends upon which case you are seeing, what is your gynex perspective and what is the comfort level of the patient. Perineometers can also be used, are, are also been used by some of the Specialist, uh, BAU PF360, it is an uh, pelvic floor muscle exerciser, which is used non-invasively to strengthen the targeted pelvic floor muscles. So if you want to do, uh, so we will be discussing about BAU PF360 and we, you can go for manual training of pelvic floor muscles. When we talk about the manual training, ultimately the uh, the better you can do with your, uh, without any instruments or without any things, the more comfortable your patients will be. So if you go for, uh, so what type of pelvic floor training, manual training you can give according to the condition, like what, what, what a wall prolapsities, what compartment prolapsities, where is the weakness, right is weaker, left is weaker, upper quadrant is weaker, lower quadrant is weaker, strength is less, endurance is less. So after going for an assessment, you can go for manual strengthening in the form of maybe uh, you just keep your hand in center, your finger in center and ask them to squeeze and uh, hold according to their endurance, what you are checking. So we typically use head surf assessment, uh, which is uh, taking care of the limitations of uh, LACOC and perfect assessment scheme. 
and we are using the ring clock assessment also so the ring clock assessment hates ring clock assessment which which gives you an idea that which o'clock position is weak and which o'clock position you need to strengthen more so these uh, manual techniques you can use pnf you can use uh, resisted exercises with the with manual resisted exercises you can use for the strengthening of the pelvic floor muscles vaginal cones are available vaginal weights are available all this and the hypopressive exercises now when we talk about the hypopressive exercises these are the different set of exercises uh, which are basically uh, using the principle that uh, creating a lower pressure lower abdominal pressure and and going for creating a sucking or you can say a you know like pulling pulling up effect into the abdominal cavity so the hypopressive exercises there are a lot of study materials videos and other things which are available and people they are they are they are articles also which are saying that hypopressive exercises are uh, giving results in cases of a pelvic organ collapse with one way two along with the pelvic floor rehab techniques and other lifestyle modifications so you can use those as well yeah this is the pelvic floor uh, pf360 what i was talking about a pelvic floor muscle exerciser so you can see this as a target activator so the target activator is used to target upon it is used to target the specific paravaginal area or you say paraurethral area or the perineal body wherever you want to have so this is the specificity of the muscle fibers which you want to target you can use so that is the uh, design yeah this this is just a short video of one of my patient i really want all of you to look at the video and uh, to understand that see when this uh, patient came this is one of my recent patient when she came she had come up with a very less uh, pelvic floor muscle activation very less strength and even on the command of squeeze and relax she was unable to follow it and after uh, almost like 10 to 15 procedures this is the improvement in terms of holding capacity for her uh, i'm playing the video if it is not getting played please let me know and replay it just try to observe the contraction of pelvic floor muscles Could you see the prolapse? Straining. Oh, could you? Uh, was the video visible to you? Did it play? Yes. Okay. So I'm just playing it once again, and you can now. What you? Sorry. What you observe into this? is uh, when she cups when she is going for a straining maneuver so uh, yes when you are assessing the pelvic organ prolapse you have to look that what is the level of prolapse during straining what is the level of prolapse in standing is it does it settle on it its own or you have to manually settle it before the treatment so observe the prolapse uh, the, the prolapse when she is scuffing and also observe that how strong is she contracting and pulling it back up up getting relaxed she's pulling it back inside so other things which you have to keep in mind is dietary management weight management and home exercise plan dietary management in the case if the patient is suffering through constipation okay chronic constipation that is something which would worsen your prolapse so better to have high fibrous high roughage diet good water intake uh, good probiotics and prebiotics and improve your gut motility so you do not end up with constipation thus your condition will be uh, will be uh, it will not worsen rather 
weight management because obesity directly create uh, gives a pressure on your pelvic floor the excessive weight would lead to constant pressure on your pelvic floor muscles so weight management again keeping in the mind that do not involve into those activities which can you know increase the strain on the pelvic floor rather than reducing the weight so weight management under the guidance of a expert is required and following the strict home exercise plan is again required statistics uh it is really an eye opening thing so this is one of the statistics which says that almost 3 lakh prolapse surgeries are performed in usa every year so i'm sure the statistics for india would be very higher than this okay almost 4 to 10 percent female suffers through prolapse uh, have sorry a uh, worse worse enough prolapse 43 to 76 female person females they do not even know that they have prolapse in one of our workshops which we conducted in hyderabad uh, it was really an eye opening experience for all of the attendees as well that out of uh, 30 candidates 20 were married out of 20 10 had prolapse out of 10 uh, sorry out of 20 10 had pelvic floor muscle weakness and out of that 10 4 had prolapse and out of that 4 one candidate had a grade more than 2 prolapse okay so it is about us the medical professionals and you think about the laymen's we ourselves we do not know what's going down there because we are not bothered about it okay so uh, females who have a history maybe are are they they are more prone because it is genetic predisposition predisposition is there almost 13% of female might have to go for a repeat surgeries post prolapse so you know what is the reason for selecting this topic today is like what as a educated professional can we do right so all you do is educate your mother educate your sister educate your aunt or your grandmother and educate your neighbors you know you start it from your own locality let them understand give them an idea of what prolapse is and see it's not a it's not a fatal condition or a you know life threatening condition but it is definitely a disabling condition depressive condition and something which can take you back from your social life okay from your personal life from your maybe mental health as well so please 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 spread the awareness about what prolapse is at least to your mothers your sisters your aunts your neighbors and let's uh, do one thing that let's pre- see once there is a prolapse you can prevent it prognosis but it is never going to go reverse so you can let it be where it is okay so it's better to get diagnosed at a stage 1 rather than getting diagnosed at a stage 3 and beyond where surgery is the only option okay so prevention or early diagnosis is better than the cure so what can you do the bare minimum which you can do for your own self for your you know for your community for your the females whom you love you know is tell them educate them of it observing their own perineum once a month once a month perineal observation is not much to ask for okay observe your whole perineum is there any change in your perineal structures is there any change in the skin the maybe the smell the discharge okay second you can do is you assess your pelvic floor muscles once a month at least you can go for hsmmt you can go for self assessment do self assessment and check whether do you feel any looseness or any difference in your pelvic floor muscle strength and even if there is any slightest of symptom present make sure you do not overlook it you visit your doctor okay so an easy way to assess the pelvic floor muscle strength uh, the commonly used is the modified oxford grading but it is very much visible that the oxford grading has a limitation in the form of it cannot assess uh, the hypertonus muscles secondly it can give you a weak vague idea on what the strength is weak fair moderate might differ from person to person okay so the better scale uh, which has been evolved by hetz and by god's grace uh, it is accepted in the university of uh, gujarat university women's health uh, masters of physics syllabus uh, that is hetz uh, mmt 
so i would really like all of you to practice to learn it and to go for it at least self examination and teach it to your mothers your sisters your aunts your grandmas your neighbors to do it on their own self and to find out that which category they fall into if they are falling into any category which is showing a weakness or a tightness it is always better to go for an early treatment rather than getting it progressed okay so uh, when we talk about hates mmt sir has <clears throat> develop this scale keeping the contractility and the relaxation ability of the pelvic floor muscles in mind and uh, taking care of the limitations of modified oxford scales which were, which was there uh, zero being the baseline tone so zero is the baseline tone when you are checking your um, uh, female for transvaginal examination zero is the normal resting tone like all of us we are sitting right now or we are listening to the webinar we have a resting tone of the muscles okay which is higher than the other muscles why because pelvic floor they are the postural muscles okay so that the resting tone which is present which is to support your organs to maintain the contents and to provide a stability that is the resting tone when you go for an assessment and if you uh, if there is no penetration it is because of pain the female is in so much of pain she is so much of tightness or discomfort that she is not allowing the penetration to take place that is minus 1 is inability to penetrate minus 2 is symptomatic penetration so minus 2 is symptomatic penetration means she she can allows you for a penetration she penetrate with, with pain with tightness with discomfort she is not she is not completely relaxed other so she is man this painful please don't do please stop here it's very painful okay so any tightness any pain any discomfort that is a grade minus 2 and if she is allowing the easy and pain free penetration asymptomatic penetration no symptoms at all that is a grade minus 3 once you are inside and you want to check the strength of the pelvic floor muscle you ask the female to squeeze the muscle uh, you squeeze your finger as if trying to hold the urine and you feel that there is a uh, there is a mild contraction from either side from any of the side there is a mild contraction that is grade 1 if there is a a grip with complete circumference that is grade 2 and if there is a strong upwards and inwards pull against resistance that is a grade 3 okay so anywhere if you think that you are falling in a grade 1 or in a grade 2 it is a high time that you start strengthening your pelvic floor muscles if you are in grade 3 good you can still do your pelvic floor exercises make sure you check yourself every month at least once and uh, remember prevention is always better than cure with this i would like to give you a short introduction of wow ip uh, wow ip uh, is under the legendary leadership of dr hate desai sir it is international institute of pelvic floor research rehab and education and uh, sir for his contribution into the field of pelvic floor rehab is popularly known as father of modern pelvic floor rehabilitation and multiple his multiple forms and innovations have received certificate of recognition from government of india uh when i talk about the certificate of recognition from government of india there can be uh, you might be confused that there can be many institutes which might have uh which might have uh, there can be many businesses uh, to get a startup but the difference is wow ip has is number one for pelvic floor education because it has specially privileged to receive the certificate of recognition from government of india with legitimate dipp number to provide specialized training to perform transvaginal transrectal pelvic floor rehab and to place skilled pelvic floor rehab specialist to gynecology urogynecology urologist etc to develop the franchisee also in domestic as well as international market to carry on same activity and to create win win situation it as it will benefit millions of patients to get specialized care to benefit doctors and hospitals by creating revenue and multiple jobs to offer innovative business models to offer unique services to bridge the gap between the patients and specialists with simple but highly efficient business plans and improve patients health well being doctor services and businesses it's a global brand we are not training only in india we are training across more than seven countries now which is not which is 
इंडिया यूएसए यूएई नेपाल फिलीपाइंस मलेशिया अफ्रीका ईरान इराक सऊदी अरेबिया सिंगापुर एंड इवन यूके सर्स बुक दैट इज हेट्स मैन्यूल ऑफ पेल्विक फ्लोर रिहेबिलिटेशन इज अ रिकमेंडेड टेक्स बुक इन मास्टर्स ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी विमेन्स हेल्थ इन गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इट इज एमेजॉन बाय गॉड्स ग्रेस इट इट इज एमेजॉन बेस्ट सेलर इन यूरोलॉजी एमेजॉन बेस्ट एमेजॉन बेस्ट सेलर इन गायनोकोलॉजी एंड ऑब्स्टेटिक्स एंड बेस्ट सेलर इन फिजिकल थेरेपी टू द एकेडमिक कंट्रीब्यूशन व्हिच आई ऑलरेडी हैड मेंशनड इज सर्स हेट्स एमएमटी हेट्स एफएमटी हेट्स रिंग क्लॉक असेसमेंट हेट्स सर्फ असेसमेंट्स प्रोवाइड हेट्स प्रोवाइडेड प्रोटेक्शन गाइडलाइंस हेट्स आरआर स्केल हेट्स एफएसएफ एंड हेट्स एमएसएफ स्केल to the endorsement of national international dignitaries the concept the technologies and the book is been forwarded it is been endorsed and forwarded by many national and international dignitaries like president uh, founder president of cefox south asian federation of urogynecology founder member of gynecological endocrine society of india ex president and vice president of foxi this federation of obstetrics and gynecological society of india national president of indian medical association united kingdom lead consultant urologist ex president urological society of india and registered clinical exercise physiologist american college of sports medicine and many national and international dignitaries to the intellectual properties and innovation sir has wow p360 wow women wow men wow uh, group mobile application easy pay fm exercise of we fit and we is uh, the other brands of wow group uh, which has uh, our wow experience research and development easy pay fm exercise of vidyo private limited which has received certificate of recognition from government of india and other brands of wow group includes vk and world pelvic floor organization uh as i already said that it is really a proud moment for us that hsmmt has been introduced into the syllabus of masters of physical therapy in women's health gujarat university uh, these are my references for today's webinar you can go through them and i would really like to say, uh, thank you uh, all for joining us into this war against silent suffering uh, once again thank you to iap iap wc chatisgarh a digital team of iap dr sanjeev jha sir dr ruchi varshne ma'am dr sikina kanchwala dr garima tiwari dr pritha dr uh, alopi from digital team india uh, from dr richa and uh, i would really once again like to thank dr hey desai sir for giving you know for uh, giving this opportunity to us to speak about this silent suffering so when we started i always say that when we started uh people were reluctant to speak about it they were not ready to accept this and now as we can see the scenario is quite different uh they they are, they are speaking up they are coming forward and they are ready to discuss their problems uh thank you very much sir for giving this opportunity to us and uh, that's all from my side thank you you can if you have any queries or con con uh, questions you can contact me always on my whatsapp that is 8005215503 and these are the flyers of our upcoming webinars uh and the workshop the hands on workshop which is in belgavi if any of you are interested you can very well join us there thank you that's it from my side i hope uh, this one hour session was fruitful and helpful to many of you and looking forward to have you in our team and um, helping millions of silent sufferers let's break the silent suffering thank you very much thank you thank you so much dhara ma'am bahut hi acha webinar tha and uh, it was uh, so informative and so practical we enjoyed it from the bottom of our hearts and now i would like to call upon neha batra from durg district chatisgarh to give vote of thanks to dharam neha batra hello dr neha please unmute yourself i'm audible ma'am yes you are yeah yeah thank you ma'am uh, i am dr neha batra sub coordinator of uh, district durbhilai i would like to thank dr sanjeev jha sir iit president thank you sir for making this an example for all thank you sir 
for being a great asset to our association. Heartiest thankful to Dr. Ruchi Vaishne, ma'am, IAP National Head. My words can never be enough to, your, to praise your action because your support is always meet beyond our expectation. I would like to thank Dr. Sakina, ma'am, Central Zone Head. My sincere thank you for being an invaluable support for each and every one of us, ma'am. My sincere thank also to Dr. Garima, ma'am, for continuously believing in us as a good team. I would like to thank today's speaker, Dr. Dhara Shah, ma'am, Chief Clinical Instructor. Thank you, ma'am, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, ma'am, for taking a time from your busy schedule. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, to be a guest speaker at our today's event. I cannot thank Anna for gracing our seminar, ma'am. I, I look forward, ma'am, to our next interaction soon. Actually, we all look forward. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I extend my thanks to Dr. Ruchi uh, Vishwakarma, ma'am, as a moderator of today's event. We could not have done it without you, ma'am, uh, that you have capturing the event so perfectly uh, so perfectly always ma'am thank you ma'am dr uh, richa vishwakarma ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh, uh, i would li also like to thank dr pitha ma'am uh, for their wonderful welcome speech uh, lastly i would like to thank all participants and listeners it is an honor for us that all have participated in today's event thank you for being a part of us and making this today's event super successful Thank you and congratulations to all IAP team and members. Thank you, ma'am. And last but not the least, IAP digital team. I would like to thank IAP digital team for conducting uh, this webinar so smoothly. Thank you so much, Aloki, ma'am. Thank you. Before I end this webinar, I would congratulate to all participants and I really enjoyed Dr. Dhara, ma'am. It was actually wonderful and very informative session for all participants. So thanks to you and thanks to Hate, sir. Before ending this webinar, I would like to thank Dr. Ruchi Vashne, ma'am, our IAP Women's Cell Head and our IAP President, Dr. Sanjeev Jha, sir, for providing a platform to all of us. And I request to all participants, please subscribe our IAP YouTube channel for watching more and more webinars. And also, uh, I want to tell you, this webinar is also available in IAP YouTube channel. So if you want to uh, join and if you want to uh, learn again, you can share over that. Thank you so much, all of you. Have a good day.